Welcome back. My name is Will Sally. We're going to talk today about using digital negatives with cyanotype. So we're going to kind of perform two tests. One is going to be uh, a step test for uh, the image that we're working on. And at the same time, we're going to do a step test for a step table. So what that has is it's got lots of gradients of slightly different, uh, different values, different densities uh, that was generated inside of Photoshop. And we'll use that as a way of printing and seeing how those values turn out and we'll eventually be using it to create a step uh, or a curve in Photoshop that will help be a correction to help kind of push the values around a little bit inside of our digital negative. Here's what we're talking about when we're talking about digital negatives if you're not familiar with the process. So the one that I like to use is this one here. It's Pictorico. Um, it just works with your inkjet printer and I just, you know, you'll set up the negative inside of the Photoshop and then print it onto this material. So since we want a positive print, our image is going to be a, a negative, so you're going to need to invert those. Uh, so there's several ways to do that, either in Lightroom or Photoshop. And, and then it's going to be printed onto this material. So we'll be placing this on top of our cyanotype paper and then allowing the light to shine through there. And anywhere where it's clear, it's going to let the light pass through and that will then expose the, the cyanotype material. Anywhere where it's darkened, it's going to hold back light and it's going to prevent that from being exposed. So eventually that part will then not get exposed. It'll be the whites or the lighter values and whatever part doesn't get exposed to light will be softened when we do the wash and will kind of wash away uh, and leave us the, the image that we're looking for. The other thing I was talking about is this here. So this is a step test and the way that the step test works it, again, it's got all sorts of different values in here with different increments. So the middle section has the, the big steps from 100 to 50, and then uh, over here from 0 up to 50. So this section are kind of the big steps, and then on both sides there's little smaller increments so that we can kind of fine-tune how much detail we want in the highlights or the shadows once we start to look at what the overall print's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of get set up over here, get the light box out, and uh, grab my pieces of paper and go ahead and put it into the UV box to start doing a step test to figure out how much exposure we need. And the way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna place this directly on top of our paper and we'll use a piece of cardboard to shield part of it and then a little by little reveal a little bit more uh, in kind of five minute increments until we figure out what our correct time is. All right, so let's go take a look. Our first set of test prints are now been completely washed and, and have had a chance to dry. We want to wait for them to dry because as they dry down and oxygen starts to um, mix with the, the cyanotype, it, it continues to get bluer and bluer. When it first comes out of the water, it looks a little bit of a lighter blue and it will slowly darken. So we want to wait for that process to happen before we start evaluating our, our actual prints. We're also going to test another method. So if you add hydrogen peroxide as part of the washing process, if you've ever had a cut and put on hydrogen peroxide, you know it bubbles up really fast. And that bubbling action kind of infuses oxygen into 
the cyanotype re really quickly. So it'll quickly darken down. Uh, and then that way, especially when we're starting to check our prints and starting to look at our values, it might be a good idea to go ahead and, and do that as part of the drying process so that our washing process so that we don't have to wait for it to dry down. And it's a little easier to see what the contrast of it's going to be like, what the overall exposure is. And we'll take a look at a comparison at the very end. We'll do one with hydrogen peroxide and one without so that we can test and see are those two prints the same value in the end. Uh, if so, then I think using the hydrogen peroxide is a great way to kind of quickly check and see if your values are where we want them after we've done our exposure. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. So I did the two tests. We put them in there. We did the time test. So you should notice a couple of things if we look at our step test. First thing is the way that it's printed, you know, we're, we're laying it down this way. So it, it's going to be uh, backwards. Uh, and so as it prints, the numbers actually come out correctly. And then what we're looking for here is how dark did it get, right? So we did five second intervals. So we've got five, or sorry, five minutes. So we did five minutes here, 10 minutes here, and then 15 minutes here. And at 15 minutes, we're getting a, a really pretty dark blue in this area here. Um, and you know our overall values here in these in these white areas are, are staying 100% white. Uh, in this area, you can see it's completely washed away. None of the numbers even stayed. But in here, we're getting a nice dark blue. And then I also did the step test at the same time for our picture that we're going to be printing today. And we can see, you know, again, this five seconds, and I'll bring this a little closer. So five seconds, 10 seconds, or sorry, five minutes, 10 minutes, and then up here, 15 minutes. And I don't want this part to go too dark. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just stick with 15. I don't really want to go darker than that. Uh, I am starting to pick up some detail in these brightest highlights. So I don't want to go a whole lot darker and, and start to get too much, too much exposure in these highlights. So based on that test, I'm going to go ahead and use 15 minutes for my overall exposure. It is a little bit longer than what our exposure was when we were doing just the um, like the photograms where we're laying stuff just directly on top of it. The, 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 the actual negative sheet film, the Pictorico, even though it doesn't look like it would, it, it does block some amount of light. So that's why we wanted to kind of retest and see how much light do we need to get through that material and get through the actual printed, um, the, you know, the image that's been printed on there. So based on those tests, I'm going to go ahead and reset up and get the light box back out and run uh, a sheet of paper at both of the of the time t you know the step test and then also one of the uh, of the, the the egg that I'm going to be printing uh, as well. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes after we run those tests. We'll take a look at those, uh, go through the washing process, and compare our results.
So let's take a quick look at our results here. So we've got both our, our digital negative and then the subsequent print uh, for our cyanotype. And so what we're really looking for as we start to look in here is we're starting to evaluate. The first thing that I kind of noticed is we do have a slightly different dark uh, blue here than we do here. So our material is still cutting some of the light and preventing us from getting to what I'm going to refer to as Dmax, meaning the, the maximum density of the paper. So it can go darker blue if given more light, because this is obviously cutting some of the light. So I may actually end up doing another test and go a little bit longer and see if we can get that same value of blue in this area, which then will give us the richest blue in our, in our blacks. So the other thing to kind of look at here is the first thing I notice is, you know, all of these values are the same amount of white, and then this row is all pretty much the same amount of white as well, meaning that our highlights are completely blocked up at 100%, uh, all the way at least into this value of 20. As we start to look here, well then, we start to get a little bit of a difference between our 20 and our 25, and then definitely from our 25 to our 30, 35, 40, we're starting to see this slow gradient as it's starting to move towards our blackest black. And it looks like to me at about 80, 85, we really start to see you know, very little change. It starts to becoming as blue as it's gonna get through that part. So what we've got is a pretty decent gradient through here, but we've kind of got this blocked up shadow and we've got definitely blocked up highlights. So what the step curve is gonna let us do is start to look at, well, what are these values and what would I like the value to be? And then we can start to make an adjustment curve. So it'll give us this, you know, S-shaped curve probably inside of Photoshop, or we can even do it in Lightroom, and create that curve so that it'll start to stretch out our, to our tonal values. Because we want a nice, rich, full-valued picture. And I want to be able to also know, well, if I want these highlights to be this bright, I, I want to be able to know if I set it to this value and I use the step curve, that they're actually going to come out at that value. Same with the shadows. If I want good detail in those shadows, I need to know, well, you know, if I make it a really dark blue, but with a little bit of detail, that it's going to convert into those values on the print. So that's what that step curve is going to do for us. Um, and it'll really help us get you know, results that we can expect uh, without having to do a lot, you know, when we do the printing. We'll just know, oh, I'm gonna put it in there for 15 minutes or if we increase the time a little bit, you know, whatever that time is that we'll always get the same results and we can do whatever adjustments we want to make the image look in Photoshop exactly the way that we want, then apply the step curve and know that it's gonna convert those values into something that's gonna match our paper. So it'll be a really big help once we get that part kind of set, okay? So that's for our, st our, our step curve. Then we've also got our results here. So again, this is our digital negative of, our, of the egg. And then these are our two prints. And what we were talking about is, you know, the, is there gonna be a difference in the dry down values uh, between, you know, this one was actually the one that I didn't do anything to, it was just water, hung it up to dry, and waited for it to kind of, you know, change itself back to blue. This is the print that was washed quickly, added hydrogen peroxide, and then rewashed to get the hydrogen peroxide out, and then allowed to dry. And when I look really closely, I mean, they're really pretty close. The, the one with the hydrogen peroxide actually looks a little bit lighter to me. And it could be that what ended up happening is I washed it a little bit more, and so the longer it was washed, it may have also started to lighten up some of those blues as well. So, um, you know, it is a really nice way to be able to see quickly, oh, but that's how blue it's gonna be. That's what the contrast is if I'm gonna be making lots of other prints. Uh, but if it's to get a rich blue, it's not necessary to do the hydrogen peroxide. It will turn a, a darker blue just by waiting and allowing the, the natural oxygen to kind of mix with that surface of the cyanotype and it will kind of darken. So there's kind of our results there. If I'm looking at the image, you know, it seems to me like I, I would still like to see if we could even go bluer here. So giving it a little bit of a longer exposure again, you can still see there is a, a slight difference between this blue and that blue. So this is where the edge of our transparency is. So I, if I do increase the time a little bit, I think that we can get an even darker blue in this area. Uh, but as you know, I would like this to be a little bit brighter. I'd like to be able to have a nice kind of highlight on this moon sort of surface of the egg and but maintain the detail there. So I think by taking the time, creating our step curve, and also increasing our time just a little bit, we should be able get, to get a result where we'll have really good, nice detail in here, this going a little bit closer to a white, 
but a richer blue kind of in this area, and that's what I'm going for. So we'll go back into the computer, start to make some adjustments, and, and then go ahead and print another negative, and I'll try another time test, or not another time test, but another print, and then we'll come back and we can compare the results to this printed image to the one that has the step curve.